But the best thing I've bought for myself this year is peace of mind. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> Love that. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of Wisdom and Wellness. I'm so excited. You know what today feels like now? Today feels like... A, a high school reunion where you're getting together with someone like you started with and then you separated now you're coming back and you're catching up and that's why we haven't started talking so today i've got sino vuyo montliwa welcome yo we've come so far eh? right yo like i feel like we almost we basically almost started together sort mm, of yeah ne? yeah we met on instagram did we meet yeah we mm. did meet on instagram mm. when when was the first time we actually actually we met so we wanted to do a, co a coffee here and there, and then you invited me to your salon. Then ah. I met you and Brendan on the same day. Yeah. And I was like, oh, she's just like me. She's so, <laughs> she's so like herself. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I love that. And Brendan's the same. Yeah. So I was like, okay, yeah, we yeah. can get along. Yeah. Yeah. And then I think we've had a, quite a relationship. The salon was so tricky because whenever you were coming in the salon, we knew, okay, okay Sino's coming. <laughs> Make sure you guys know what you're doing with him. But I think it was so really? good because. What was good because it made us, um, especially because we were dealing with natural hair, so mm. it made us be on our toes as well mm. um, to know that we are actually doing the, say, the, the the right thing. And I think you also even trained my staff at mm. some point. So mm. it's been yeah, quite a journey. That. Yeah, that quite a journey. So for me, um, I actually said this and I was like, I love going to your salon, but I remember someone DM me and said, oh, I saw you at um, Aneno earlier and you were on the phone and I overheard what you were saying on the phone and I'd like to offer you a service based on what you were saying. What? Then I was like, I, I can't do it anymore because it's like not a, uh, I can't be Sino. Oh, yes, I'm Sino, yes, the yes. influencer. Yeah. So I think... Um, I get that. Do you get what I'm saying? I get that. But I also, I never knew that that's how you felt when I was coming. Well, it wasn't a bad thing. It was a very constructive thing. And okay. we spoke about this just before that there's certain people you can take criticism from mm, it's a safe space. in certain aspects of your of your life. So there's certain people I can take criticism from in my marriage, but I can't take it in business. I can take it in business, but not in my marriage. You know, I think as people, we need to balance those. But before we get deep, I've got questions. Icebreakers. And we always get deep. <laughs> We're like, we like we enjoy deep conversations. We like so deep, so deep. Uh, and it gets loud. And I, but I love it because we just exchange yeah. ideas and perspectives. Yeah. Okay, what is a favorite I your favorite item that you bought this year? This year, oh my gosh, I haven't been buying this year because really? yeah, all my money is going into my business. So this year is the non-spending year. I spent a lot in the first year of business because that's when your most profit is before year five. Yeah, 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 yeah. So no, this year I haven't bought anything at all. Well, I bought shades, but they're not like my favorite. So the reason I bought the shades was I realized shades. shades yeah, 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 yeah. I realized that um, the okay. I realized that when I buy things, I don't. When I buy things that quickly wear out yeah i don't like them as much so i get over them I get that. so i didn't know why i got over my vests from <laughs> certain shops yeah. and i bought a vest and i was like i'm wearing this vest and it's four years later oh because it's good quality uh, so i bought the shades because i wasn't wearing my other shades yeah. and i was like and these shades i wear all the time yeah now. yeah i feel the same i thought i didn't like shades but it's because mm. the ones i was wearing yes. were just not the right one. and then you start getting like a better quality yes. like, okay i can do the shades yes, thing yes. i can do the shade thing but the best thing i've bought for myself this year is peace of mind <laughs> Love that. <laughs> Love that. Okay, what uh, what have you completed from your bucket list? This year, oh my goodness. Um, Doesn't have to be this year. Okay, just in general. Whew, I'm not a bucket list person, eh? Really? No, I'm like a, I'm a, I'm not, in a, I'm not a strategy, bigger picture strategy person. My yeah. partner is that for me. Yeah. I'm a detail person. Okay. So, for, for example, I live every minute of my life according to um, honesty, okay. integrity, okay. and resting, being happy. Okay. So, if you, if you decided now that you want to go bungee jump, you'd just be like, okay, let's go. No, I'm scared of heights. <laughs> but anything else, yeah. yeah if I decided go. now, give me a bucket list idea, like item. What is a bucket list item? Um... Do I have a bucket list now that so, you so, mention so it? I have books that I hadn't read. Yeah. I, like I'll read half or I won't start it, but yeah. I'll buy it. Yeah. So this year I decided I'm going to finish books. So I okay. finished a lot of my books. Like okay. I finished over like 12 books. Okay. And then every book that I start, I want to finish. But I don't okay. know if that's bucket list. It really. is a bucket list because bucket list doesn't, we think bucket list is skydiving mm. and all of that. But it actually really, I'm trying to think what my bucket list is. 
I do have one, but I don't think I call it bucket list because it's very like personal and in touch oh, with same. me and all of that. Same. So I've <laughs> reached a new level in vulnerability. Okay. I believe that vulnerability unlocks life. Like, I, outside, I think on the other side of vulnerability is like color. Okay. Like I feel like before wow. I was stuck in a world of fear, not saying what I actually mean. Black and white. Yeah. yeah. So I'm in the gray area. So I've, I've access the gray area of life through being vulnerable. So sure, I'm very proud them. of that. <laughs> You've already give, you giving me like quotes of access the, the, the what? The gray area of life? Is through, that what vulnerability, By, yeah. through vulnerability. So my therapist calls it, I say gray area now because I know it now, but before he said, I live a life where it's water and concentrate. Oros, he used Oros. Oros, concentrate. Yeah. I need to live a life where we mix it and I live in the mix. <laughs> but so. the, no, you know, I get why it's hard to be in the mix because in, I don't know how to explain it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, it makes sense, but in the mix, for me, I feel like I need to understand how much water was put in, yeah. how much concentrate. I'm Did it same. make sense? Yes. Was it the right level? Yes. Is it cold yes. enough? Is so it you need to overcome <laughs> that. Yeah, you need to, to, live it, to be comfortable in that. Definitely. Oh, and then when I couldn't decipher it, I'd put it in a parallel universe so that I didn't, I didn't have to deal with it. Yeah. But vulnerability accesses the ability to live in that area. Sure. Okay. That's so good. This is supposed to be very light. <laughs> it is very light. This is light this for is me. supposed to this be is extremely light. For me. light. My partner says, Yo, baby, you know what your favorite thing is? Deep yeah, conversation. Like, like, this is like the lightest part of the conversation. Okay. If you had to have um, dinner with two celebrities or mm. influential or um, people you look up to, who would it be and why? Ooh, okay. So I'm going to do the black and white of it all. I love Diddy. Like Be Diddy. Diddy. I what? love him. Love Doctor. I love how um how much he knows okay. experience. Yeah. I love how fun he is. Okay. I like it when he's like with Carisha at the top of the of the car <laughs> driving through New York yeah. and singing. I yeah. love that. Like I love letting go. Okay. Okay. So that's the extreme side. On the other end, I love Ava. I like Ava Duvernay. Yes, yeah, so okay. I can't say her surname, so I avoided it. <laughs> Duvern yeah. Duvernay, yeah. yeah. So I like how she tells black stories. Um, I like her perspective. I think she's a vivid thinker like me. Yeah. I think she I think she had I think she expresses unprocessed thoughts in her art. Sure. Do you get what I'm saying? I it's get hard. You. That's I get a hard you. thing I'm to do. I'm thinking she did um Sugar. Give me the yeah. um um Oprah's the thing. Yeah. Um, was it black sugar? No, no it's not, not black, black sugar. Not black sugar. It's Something sugar. Sugar. But they're on a farm and... They're on a farm, Queen yeah. Sugar. Queen Sugar, yes. yes. She did Queen Sugar. And I, I want to re-watch it now because I tried watching it, I think, four years ago and I couldn't connect. Oh. But now, with your explanation now, I can understand why I didn't connect now. Oh. And it's the same way with Gabriella's um, book. Oh. Um, is that you're going to need more wine. Yes, you're going to need more both. wine. The first time I read it, I was just like, what is happening? The first and time I read it, I was like, this is me. Really? Yes. The first time I read it, I was just too young. I was in my 20s. I had oh, not, I had not experienced I life. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then I read it last year and I was like, ha. Huh. No, it's everything. When she talks about like how people viewed her, my favorite thing that I always tell people from that book is when she said, when women divorce, right, men can move on, yeah. right? But women almost like never move on from that marriage and, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I found that so deep. Do you yeah. know, I spent like weeks dissecting yeah. that. Yeah. I was like, because as black women, our goals are so intertwined with marriage. They are. Our success, our self-worth. Everything. And I, so, so for me, like, oh gosh, I think too deeply about everything. But for me, I, I think she expressed her life experiences so well in that book she did it's and unrefined it, but it's great it was when i when i read it i was almost it, it really challenged my vulnerability i thought i had gotten to a place where i'm open to vulnerability and the more i read her book the more i realized shucks um am i even ready to really be who i am or to 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 freely show who i am because she's so honest she says she's things so honest. um you just like it's uncomfortable. Yeah, it's, it's, it's uncomfortable. Uncom in the second book, I felt like she did overshare. Then I was yeah, like, that's how yeah, I felt. That's yeah. exactly how but I felt. But I was like, but good for her. Good for her. Because I say those things to myself, but I can't say, you can't it say them to other loud. people. Yeah. Yeah. And we need someone like yes. her to actually say yes. those things that we're all thinking yes. and we're all feeling, especially as women. Yo, when, she, when I was reading that book, I was just like, Whoa. have you ever said something <laughs> that's reserved for yourself to someone else? All the time. Like, all the time. Um, so I don't do well in, in big spaces. I don't do well in big social spaces where we all have to be great and fit in. I don't do well at all. Like I literally crumble. But 
on one on ones i can literally connect with anyone mm. because i'm able to open myself up okay. and in opening myself up and sharing the not so good about me okay. it allows the other person to be the same so no, definitely. all the time and sometimes um because not everybody can receive it well. Sometimes mm. I'm just like, mm, shouldn't have got there. Yes, then but it's okay. But it's part but of the process. The, but for the most part, it's. I think it's one of the best things about me. I think yeah. there's a lot of great things about you. But <laughs> Thank I you. get that. I acknowledge that. Yeah. So actually, I wanted to go somewhere else, but I want to go. I want to stick with vulnerability. What does okay. vulnerability mean to you, and what does it look like right now? Vulnerability, I feel like, has been my rebirth. Hmm. Um, yeah, so I oh, I lived a very different life before hmm. vulnerability. Vulnerability has allowed me my first relationship. Vulnerability has allowed me deeper relations with my sisters, yeah, uh, with my family. Vulnerability has actually allowed me a deeper relationship with myself. Sure. Because before, I'll give you a typical morning in Sino's life, right? So I'd wake up, right, and be like, um, today I don't feel like doing something. That that's my deep, true feeling, yeah, right? Yeah. And then I'd live the opposite of that. Or mm. that day I'd feel like, oh, today I want to see someone, right? Yeah. You say, I want to see Mpumi. Yeah. And then I'll be like, nope, I'll never express what I actually feel. Yeah. And then I realized, well, not realized, my therapist helped me with this. He was like, you have unprocessed trauma from your childhood. Because mm. it's complex, like how, I was, like how I was brought into the world and never having the chance to have those conversations with the people that brought me into the world and the continuous like struggles that I experienced. I had a great childhood. Mm. I had a roof over my head. I had, I had good food. I went to a good school. But the emotional side yeah. was sort of unmade. It was made by my mom, then she passed away. Yeah. And that felt like a great like rejection yeah. kind of thing by, yeah. by the world, by God. Like yeah. I felt like... I'm not worthy, yeah. you know, of a t good life experience because sure. my mom is gone, right? Sure. And I was 16. I remember I was crying so much. I lost weight. I was 48 kilograms. I remember my dad was like, stop crying. It's enough now. That was like on week three. And then, he, sure. and then like I said, I had lost more weight. And I remember him saying, I love my dad to death. Like my yeah. dad's the smartest person I've ever met. Best businessman ever. Like, but we spoke about how business was different with the older generation mm. and the systems and mm, stuff. Mm. But regardless, great thinker. And I remember he said, what's wrong with you? Are you sick? You know? Sure. So he was unable, I don't think he was taught by his parents yeah. to connect. Yeah. Right? But it was a completely different generation Definitely. Also. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. So I think I then, since my, mom's pass, since my mom's passing, I then carried my childhood and I had a different perspective about it. And then going forward, I was hard. Yeah. I was unable to access my vulnerability even to myself. Sure. I was unable to open up my heart. I was unable to accept people's faults and wrongs. Mm. Um, I was hard, man. Mm. And then when I learned that, I remember my therapist giving me pointers of how to to communicate with my partner. I remember he wanted to visit me and I was like, no, I'm writing Pointers exams. Pointers to communicate with your partner? Because I was unable to, because I, I was too scared of... I, was just, I don't know what. Yeah. So, but it was accessing vulnerability now that I yeah, know. Yeah. At the time, I didn't even know I was scared. Wow. So I remember I told him. So he his ther his therapy um, process was for me to tell him what happened in every day. Okay. So I was like, oh, but I, why can't I tell you my traumas? And he's yeah. like, no, by you telling me what happens in every day, I can see your your blind spots. Yeah. So then I, he wanted to visit me, and I was like, no, I'm writing exams. And he's like, so you don't want him to visit you? I was like, yes, I do. He's like, why don't you say it? <laughs> I was like, no, but like, what if he doesn't make it? Um, and what oh, if? Wow. And uh, and he was like, no, just tell him. Then I tell, told him the next day, oh, you can come through. Um, obviously, he was in East London and I'm here. Yeah. It's like, you can come. And then he was like, no, but she said yesterday I mustn't come. Then I was like, obviously, like, that's what I expected. Yeah, that's what you expect. He was there the next day. He drove from East London through sure. Tata. And that's like the longer route. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I realized, wow, vulnerability can give me love. Vulnerability can give me acceptance. Vulnerability can make me heard. Vulnerability yeah. can give me what I seek most in life, which oh is to be God. seen and heard. You're so giving it me so many life. goosebumps. And I don't want to move past the past, past the, the part you said where you were you couldn't say, I want him to, yes, come visit me, because what if he doesn't come? And I'm wondering how many of us are so stuck in that or miss out on so many things because we create an entire scenario of something that's probably not going to happen just to protect ourselves. And it's so real. Like, that's all you can believe when you feel it. Like, no one can tell you otherwise. But that's why I think telling our friends and sisters about all our internal struggles, gets it's like endless because yeah. they'll all say, oh, I'm so sorry, my friend. I love you. Hug yeah. you. Your sister will say, you'll get through it. But yeah. the therapist gives you a way out. 
Sure. So I don't think anyone can ever resolve your issues. Yes, I think obviously people can help, communication helps, but no one has ever been able to do what therapy did for me because they've studied it. Yeah. They know yeah, the, the, the human the process. Yes. Yeah. They're not just trying to give you a feel good yes. um, moment. Because that I think that's what we are as as people. That's what I want to be for my daughter, for my friends. Is as soon as they tell me the issue, I want to fix it. Mm. As opposed to let's actually walk through it. And I think for the most part, we're not looking to necessarily fix, but to 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 reconcile those feelings with ourselves and to walk through whatever is actually really happening. And we want help. Like we want a way to fix it. To fix it. Imagine yeah. being stuck with an issue that you don't even know is an issue forever. Yeah. Like yeah. it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's hard. Tell me about your upbringing. You mentioned um, before you lost your mother, mm. um, the way you were brought mm. into life. Mm. Um, how was that? And yeah, I want to know about your upbringing. Okay, so I was born in Butterworth. Uh, my mom was everyone's favorite person. Really? My mom, like I'd walk in town and my mom would have like her hand in my collarbone and that's how we'd walk around like she introduced me to touch so my main love language is touch yeah and i think everything we are is learned yeah so i think i learned touch from her and then um, my dad would come visit me but i never understood why he was visiting and not staying over oh. um and then eventually when i grew up my mom passed to okay well I, I moved to my dad's i would move back and forth to my dad's home and to my mom's home and no one ever explained why no no one ever told me what was happening no one I just didn't know. I was just floating, right? Mm. And then I think it all became re real when my mom passed away when I was in grade 11. She passed away in a car accident. And then then I had to look at who I am, how things have been, how they were, because it's almost like I wouldn't get it, but then my mom would hold me and it would be fine. Mm. So now she wasn't there. And I think... Now you I, have to actually deal. Yeah. Now you have to know why. Yeah. So I didn't deal for a very long time. I lost a lot of weight, got to varsity, lived my best life. Um, associated with friends that comfort me the most. Mm. So I didn't associate with friends that um, were compatible with me, mm. but like escapism. Yeah. Uh, going out. Yeah. Going out to the club. Yeah. And I know people say, ah, we're just having fun. I don't know. I'm that deep. Like I know there's a reason behind it. <laughs> yeah, so I know why I went out so much. Um, unable to connect. Didn't want relationships. Um, unable to connect all around, you know. And then um, my dad, what I got from my dad was decision making, execution, uh, understanding how a business works. Yeah. Obviously, we can always improve. Yeah. Um, so my dad, I got uh, from my mom. I got soft skills. I don't know how your, to yeah, term from it. From your dad, you got I guess life skills, almost. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yes. How to be how successful. To be su yes. How to be great. Yeah. How to be successful. How to be how great. How to be great. And from your mom, you got touch. touch. I got. Um, connecting with people, the value of community. Yeah. My, my home, my whole street where I grew up, everyone loved my mom. I've yeah. been into everyone's ho homes. When my mom passed away, never did, never did I go into those homes again. The, wow. the connections were completely lost. Yes, they came to my mom's funeral. It was nice for yeah. a while, but obviously people get going with their lives. Yeah. And that's so, the, that's the yeah, truth. Yeah, and it's fine. Yeah. And I realized that my mom was the glue in the community. Obviously, sure. I can't take that role and make it mine. <laughs> but I mean, I get, like, those are the skills she gave me. Yeah. Like, the soft skills or seeing it and being able to know that community is life, you know. How different would, do you think life um, would have been had you understood why you're going back and forth? Uh, I'm actually struggling to understand the concept that you didn't understand why your parents are... Uh, why are you living at this house and why your dad's visiting? When you mentioned that, like, I struggle to to grasp that concept that you didn't understand that your dad has to visit you. Like nobody explained it. So and I can, sorry, like, and to just to, before you go on, and I can almost understand how that's actually a thing for a lot of families. No, definitely. I'll tell you why I, when I started understanding it, why I needed it. Um, Oprah helped a lot. Oprah yeah. speaks about it a lot. Like Oprah once said. People will look for their parents. They'll be, they've been raised well, but they'll look for their birth mothers mm. or their birth fathers because mm. there's a, a coming together of existence, mm. I, I'll say. Mm. So, for example, when my, my sisters became mothers and I saw how they were mothering, I was like, oh, wow, I get why there was such a, a need mm. to be emotionally parented. Like, yeah. I remember you said you don't speak to Nuri like a baby. Yeah. Yeah. Like, someone had to say to me, you're going... I don't have the answers, yeah. but I know that communication and closing the circle for your kids continuously <sighs> from the time they won. The circle, have yeah. you read Oprah's book, the new one with the um, th what, child you? therapist? Yeah, I haven't. I've started it. I'm not it's ready. So I'm not. Good. I'm just. I had to be honest that I'm not ready. I get it. Yeah, I was ready. 
it, she, he, oh my gosh, she, why am I getting emotional? <laughs> she, it's so crazy. Like he says, um, for example, when he goes to see it, sorry for spoilers, but when he goes to see a child and he's like I say, a child that's gone through trauma and he is there to help the child, he first has to make himself familiar with the child. So mm. he'll play with the child first. Mm. Um, the child must trust him. Right? Yeah. Trust yeah. is a big thing a for big, children. Massive thing. So I never trust, I never had stability. I had stability, but I didn't. I never knew. Like one day my dad would pick me up and I'd go to East London. Mm. And then one day I'd be in, 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 at home with my mom and Butterworth. And that's just life. That's just life. But there was, it just never felt like I understood what was happening. Mm. And I think even as a four-year-old, there is some sort of trust in the process that you should have mm. and understanding of why things are happening. Yeah. So in that book they say like when a child is crying, like a newborn is yeah. crying, they almost know that the mom's going to come and comfort them. Sure. So when a child just cries, 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 and the mom doesn't come, that child already starts um, having problems that are going to affect him for the rest of his life or her life. That's the first three weeks after you're born is the most important three weeks of your life because sure. you learn comfort, you learn trust, you learn depending yeah. on your environment. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So I felt like I got it, but the loop never closed. Mm. And like to this day, I think if my mom was alive, I'd be able to have the conversation mm. with her. Um but I, I, she's not, so yeah. I can't. Yeah. Um, my, my dad, I love him, love him with my whole soul, and but I just can't have the conversation with him at because all. at all. But he's so many other things for me, yeah. and I feel like that's the journey that I've had to go through myself. Sure. And I think vulnerability has made me able to access the emotions I had as a child mm. and re really, like visit them and soothe myself differently. So, for example, learning soothing, right? So before I throw tantrums, right? Yeah. Um, but I've gotten better. So, for example, if I don't get my way or things don't go how I planned, I'll have a literal emotional, like, unable, un I'm unable. To gather yourself. Yeah. To come together. Yeah. 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 And it could take me three minutes, not three minutes, but it could take me five minutes. It could take me an hour. It could yeah. take me three days. Sometimes it takes me a month. And then now I've had to teach myself self-soothing because mm. then I was never taught self-soothing. I think oh, even being okay. told that you're going there is a soothing process. Sure. Okay, now we're going in the car, we're wow. going to East London oh my and gosh. there you're going, I mean, your stepmom's going to yeah. be there. Yeah. But I mean, I didn't even know. I just got there and I had to you call know, someone else mom. You, like, know, you know what's crazy? Um, so the whole concept of sleep training and I've sli uh, my, both my kids are sleep trained. I believe yeah. in it highly. I've and we it. use the, the cry out method, right? Mm. And I think my kids are emotionally intelligent i believe they're very emotionally intelligent and they have a good understanding of what's happening um because now i've got the concept closing the circle mm. and i really try and do that but the whole concept of um sleep training is that you teach your kids self -soothe. to self-soothe so it's not that as adults we don't wake up in the middle of the night mm. we do mm. We wake up multiple times in the middle of the night, but we don't actually open our eyes and get going with life because mm. we know how to put ourselves back to sleep. That's mm. called self-soothing. And the same thing. So when we sleep training kids, we're actually teaching them to self-soothe that, yes, you're going to wake up three, four times, but you're able to actually put yourself back to sleep. So that's exactly what sleep training is. So when you talk about self-soothing, I'm getting it in that aspect that we as as human beings, we need to be assisted or communicated to that this is going to happen, but you can actually bring yourself back here. And at the end of every self-soothing session with your children, you were always there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's, you create a new pattern. Yeah. And, that and you pattern, communicate yeah, it. Yes. Yeah. So I was, I was actually telling a friend now before she starts sleep training, your child is seven months old, but you tell them, baby... Mommy's going to teach, mommy's going to do some sleep training now. I want you to sleep through the night so that tomorrow you can wake up and you're a happy child and you have structure. You can actually say it to your kids because they understand. And I definitely think as much as not all experiences are, uh, are, are happy experiences, yeah, yeah. I think your success, my success, mine, if, if I wasn't successful, even that, like yeah. failure, not failure, but not getting the life maybe that you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All comes from the experiences we've had. Yes, absolutely. So my, my, every bit of my upbringing has resulted in Love Kings. Mm. I mean, I've loved hair because I had five sisters. Mm. We stopped relaxing our hair in, 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 in salons in grade seven. My sister would relax us. Mm. So then I started understanding that when I leave the relaxer in for less time and if they don't comb my hair, my sister's not doing my yeah. hair, it doesn't go thin. Yeah. So now like I'm already starting to learn. You're developing. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So you can't, there's only one Bumi, there's only one Sino. Yeah. You can't replicate from the time I was born to now. And if you... Sure, that's so important to mention. Right? Yeah. And I think once you recognize that your biggest success will come from 
a puzzle of your life. Sure. Yeah. Your experiences. Yeah. They then you can that. really tap into it. Yeah. I want to. I want to know a little. I'm very. Ex- I'm very keen and excited to know um, about your mother. The way you share about her. Um, how was your? How was your relationship with her? And how has it influenced the woman you are? right now especially because now you are learning so much about yourself and you are in a space where you're open to being vulnerable i also seen this so like yo guys like my mom is peak where i'm like guys everyone love my mom mm. like i get people dming me that i've never met they'll say i know your mom wow someone sent me a picture of me in my uniform from grade two and said your mom gave us this picture of you, she was so excited after your school photography day and they still have it. Like that wasn't a DM. My mom was a teacher. Yeah. So like she'd go to different schools uh, and then she'd be like, okay, the school had a certain pass rate. Yeah. And then she transformed that school to a hundred percent pass rate. Wow. She taught accounting. She could have been an accountant. She was mm. smart. She passed cum laude. Mm. She had bursaries um, all her life. And then she choose, she chose to teach accounting and she'd like get bursaries for people. Wow. Like to UCT or Cape, I don't know, obviously. Yeah, yeah. But like, University. Her heart is very open. Dude, my mom, like, obviously we speak so well of people that have passed. Yeah. But mom, she used to hit me, like, like with a... <laughs> All our mothers a, did. A wooden spoon. <laughs> yeah. And it wasn't always, like... No, it wasn't but when traumatic I, yes, at the time. Yeah. But when... Actually, how amazing is that? There's certain things that can happen in one relationship. Yeah. And, like, someone can hit you in two... Two different people can hit you. Yeah. But one will be traumatic and one and won't. One, my mom was so comforting. Like, she'd hit me and then... She, <laughs> and then the night she's like, come, let's watch TV, Generations. <laughs> and she'd hold me and she'd hug me. Yeah. Then I'd be comforted. Yeah. She lived so well, man. Um, I definitely do think maybe there was a bit of a struggle. Like, maybe I think... I don't want to say she was depressed. I can't diagnose her. Mm. But I definitely think there were struggles that she couldn't talk to us about. Yeah. Because I remember like now when I, sometimes when I sit in bed all day or I wear my gown all day, um, it's not, sometimes it's nice, but sometimes yeah. I know that, okay, there is a sadness that I'm feeling Something's here. Something's happening, yeah. Yeah. So I think maybe there was a bit of loneliness there. But I mean, I think about her in different aspects. She visits me in my dreams all the time. Really? Yeah, and we have such crazy conversations. And she always comes as a different person. Um, I've actually had so many encounters. I don't know how you, uh, how in tune you are with this side of life. Mm. But three times in my life, I've been approached by different people who um, who say, they say they've got a calling. Yeah. Or I don't yeah. know how to phrase it. And they'd be like, oh, your mom just said this. So Aww. there's three different times. The first time I was in King Williamstown when I was younger. And then um, it happened at a snail salon. And then um, when, when but it, I distinctly remember it was three times. And it's so weird. Like I speak to her like, like she's here. Like Aww. I'll be like, yo, yeah, ma. Like it's chilled. Do you think that comes with reconciliation? Like reconciling and maybe acceptance is a better word. Um, yes, definitely acceptance. And I also feel like you can love a person even after they're gone. So it doesn't mean that it has to be cut off. I, 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 I get the theory of that because I understand that we are spiritual beings and life doesn't start when you're physically born and doesn't stop when you, you're physically gone. So I get that. I get it. But I can imagine, I can and cannot imagine how, how, I guess it, how hard it can be to know that you love this person, you want to connect, but you can't see them anymore and you can't touch them. I think it's hard in the beginning. So yeah. it's been over 10 years. So I think with time, okay, with time, you learn with knowing yourself. Yeah. So obviously it wasn't like that for me in the beginning. Before I'd listened to her voicemail like 10 times. Really? Eventually they cut it off, yeah. Then I'd Google her. Then when you Google her, you get your, you see the death certificate. Then I'd like sometimes to reconcile, like I'd just Google it and yeah. see it and be like, okay, no, it's happened. But sure. now I think I've healed. I think I've accepted. It doesn't hurt anymore. So wow. before I'd think of her and I'd crumble, <clears throat> like on her birthday, on my birthday. But now like I can remember her and not cry. Like I can be fine. Like I'm less negatively emotional when okay. she comes up now okay. Okay. but it takes time that's good it's been like 13 <laughs> years what are you most proud of about where you are right now i i'm so proud of the fact that i have been able to tap into who i am and create a good life for myself um emotionally what's a good life for you yeah good life for me is emotional um reconciliation so thoughts that i have about my life myself my friends my sisters my colleagues there has the loop has to be closed okay so i don't i don't shake okay kind of thing yeah um even if it's not a good experience i'll be like okay i love that person but we've had a breakdown of a friendship yeah why did that happen you need to be able to close the loop yeah how do Um, we yes and i own a lot of my mistakes and then I also don't um, 
villainize myself in every situation. There's going to be situations where it's going to fall apart because of the other person. Teach me how. Really? You did say, you did how. say you struggled to, but I think if you want it enough, you're going to do things in your every day to try to get there. I and do, you'll get there I eventually. I definitely feel like it's more of a, there's more of an urgency for that now. Okay. And yeah. it's timing. It's Everything timing. happens. Yeah. There we go. Everything happens. I feel like your life is almost maybe demanding it yeah. more. Yeah. So then you have to yeah. quicken the process to get there. Absolutely. No, def- Absolutely. no definitely. Um, so I'm very proud of the life that I've created. A yeah. good life for me is financial stability, emotional st- stability. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you were still telling me before I interrupted you what you're most proud of. Um, I'm most proud of, yeah, the life that, that I've been able created. to create yeah. um, for myself through tapping into who I am. Yeah where I've come from, yeah. um, actually hair. Yeah. Natural hair has been the best medium for me to express who I am. I think it's nuanced enough. I think it's complex. It's as complex as I am. Yeah. Different. So many different women have so many different experiences with their hair. Yeah. And it's endless. For me, I need to, I need to, I need, I need, I need mediums yeah. for expression. Yeah. And I feel like hair Here's gives that. me an endless w- medium for expression. Now that we're there, I'm so glad we got <laughs> there because, I mean, I think there was a, if we're being honest, there was a, a time where natural hair was the thing we're mm. all talking about and we're getting into. Mm. And we were both in the space. And mm. I, I mean, I was passionate, but mm. you were very, and you still <laughs> are. Very, um, and it, we've almost, I don't want to say moved away from that, but we're at a point where it's no longer the it thing. It's mm. not trendy. Mm. And you're, I don't want to say you're still there, but you're still extremely passionate. Why? Why and what is it? And how exactly do you tie in your expression um, as a see no to to hair? So for me, I think I'm still there because it was never just about the hair. Okay. So for me, it's always been black women's relation to their hair. Yes. And specifically um, type four hair. Okay. So for me, it's like when I cut my hair, I had so much difficulty figuring it out. <laughs> and obviously that's going to rile me up. I'm just <laughs> yeah. like, mm, why is why? my scalp dry? Mm, why yeah, am I like, scratching so much? <laughs> it's not making sense. Literally, so it gives me purpose. So figuring mm. out why we don't feel pretty mm. in our hair. Figuring out why people hide it. And then when you address them on hiding it, they get defensive. They're like, no, <laughs> I choose it. Yes, yeah. I choose this. And also understanding that it is a choice. Yeah. Understanding that there's no good or bad choice, but also like the so, endless complexity. Yeah, it's just like yes. the more you unfold, the yes. deeper. Yeah. What we've been told about here, what in turn we've taken from what we've been told. And and also we get told something, then you interpret it and yeah. then you tell yourself something about yeah. it. Yeah. So it's like, I remember I used to play with my teacher's hair, like in, Mrs. King in grade four. Yeah. And like, what is it about that hair that fascinated me so much? Because now I'm like, I like how I get grip from my hair yeah. when I do. Um, I'm a god that. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then I remember I thought it being so slippery. and Was the way. Yeah, yeah. And I no longer see that as the more, 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 the nicer life experience. <laughs> so for me, it's like, I've gotten to a point where when I see my hair, I don't associate it with anything negative. Mm. At all. At all. No matter. No, the, like. If, because we have to be, like sometimes you, especially when it's, like I'm still at a good length where I still, it's still, I, I still know what I'm doing. I don't even use those terms, good length. Oh, okay. Awkward length. I'm at, I don't use shrinkage. There's no such thing as shrinkage. so much I'm learning to do. But now I can no, wake up, the, get in the shower and just Thing. But I know that my hair is going to grow soon and my hair grows um, fast here in the front and then here it grows really, really slow. And I know that there's going to be mornings where I wake up and I I have a, a, a chico I didn't choose. <laughs> but like, okay, for example, I'm not going to use, I'm not a mother, so I can't use your children as an example. So I'm um, cooking, right? Yeah. Some days I'll burn the food and sometimes I understand, okay, I burned the food because I was in a hurry. So it was on high heat. Mm. Lazy Makoti taught me low heat all the time. Like, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. what... What is there in life that feels the same every day? Mm. You know what I'm saying? So with hair, sometimes you'll feel like, oh, I don't feel like, why is it like this? Why? But it's not, it doesn't have to be negative. Mm. Like, do you beat yourself up when mm. you, you, you've burnt the food? I no, don't beat myself it just, up. No, it's like, oh, I burnt it. I'll make I another one yeah, or I'll order or we'll eat it. Like yeah, we'll just scrape we off. move on. We're yes. able to just move on. Yes, but I also get that. I've had the privilege of leaving my urban and regional planning 10-year career yeah. and giving seven years of every day to hair. Mm. So I've definitely reached a point where, I don't know if other people want to reach that point, but a point that I've been intentional about reaching, yeah. that I've reached through every second of every day. Yeah. I'm not saying I'm experiencing... Yeah. Actually, I might be experiencing it every second because it's on my hair, but I mean, on my head. But I mean, I understand that I do this 24-7. Yeah, this is your... 
my life. life. Yeah. yeah. So I fought it every second. So so weird. So when I was testing my hair products, I was like, wow, these are the best products I've ever used. Oh, really? Like, Did you? Yeah. 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 She's like, oh, this is, yeah. <laughs> and then I was it. like, oh my gosh, people are going to think I'm selling. I'm not selling. They are the best products That's I've ever the used. That's the truth. <laughs> They're moisturizing. Yeah. The, hair, the oil is sealing. I can attest. I've been Thank using you. them for a good month Thank and you. a half. Yeah. Thank you. And your hair looks stunning. Thank you. Um, um, and then I realized that I can say that because I've done the work. Mm. I'm not a scientist. Mm. I'm not a hair. I didn't, I, I believe in science. Mm. I, I didn't formulate, I didn't do it in the kitchen. Um, a sci- <laughs> <laughs> a sci- and I don't, I'm not saying no, I'm laughing can't. because we had yeah. a conversation of how yeah. we tried to formulate yeah. something in the kitchen and we realized actually kitchen formulation is a bit of a myth. Yes. Yeah. And then um, even the scientists who did them, I could give him pointers. Mm, wow. Yeah. And then you realize, and it's not pointers from a place I know better. Yeah. But I just understand there's so many blind spots yeah, in you, life. You know. Yes. Your, you know your hair. I know my, oh, yes. I know my hair. And by knowing my hair, I feel like it's access vulnerability. Yeah. Being honest about how I feel yeah, about my hair yeah. is accessing vulnerability. You, live in it. you wake up in it. Yes. You, you experience it. Yes. On a day. So nothing can, nothing can, it's, it's what you were saying about our, our journeys and our successes. I can't take it away from you. You can't. You can't. And you can't take away each person's hair experience. For example, I never used to feel pretty unless I had a weave on or braids. Mm. For me, for me, um, braids were just as sort of comforting when it comes to how beautiful I feel. Yeah. And I get it. It was the length. It yeah. was the moving. Yeah. It was the natural the pulled, contour. Yeah. The pulled, yeah. We, said <laughs> <that> <laughs> we said that at the same time in different mm-hmm. ways. The pulled effect. Um, I remember someone said it's like having like your yes. eyes like this. Yeah. Even the, the skin, it gives up, I don't know what the skin you glow the comb, it is. Comb. Yeah. Some of, it's, apparently it makes you look brighter. It does. Or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> or so we think. But why does looking brighter, like, I don't know. I don't know. Like it's complex. I know, but I don't want to get into it. I get you. Mm, and also, people don't receive it so well yeah, all the time. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, definitely learning my hair and learning different people's experiences with their hair. At my master classes, we'd have like an hour session where everyone would talk about where they are with their hair. Oh, wow. So, then for me, that was the meat. Mm. For me, that's what's helped me create my products. My products are all created through... Um, Research and yeah. the research comes from the masterclasses, the, the DMs, the comments. Yeah. I remember someone said, you know, you don't always reply to your comments. I'm like, wow, but I read them so much yeah. and I use them you so use much. Them for, yeah, yes. yeah. And then I realized, no, it's not enough to feel it. You have to show it. And sure. You have to show it in a way that people want yeah. it to be, like people that want to see yeah. it. Yeah. So now I'm like, appreciate the, the yeah. comment. Love this. This is the feedback that I need. I was saying those things internally. But, yeah, I wasn't but you weren't that, saying to the yes, people. Yeah, yes. yeah. So uh, hair so, for me was just more about, it was not about the hair only. Yeah. It was about the life experience with our hair for the black woman. And I think that's endless. What was the first name before it was Love Kings it was? Your master classes. Has it always been Love Kings? Yeah, but it was always like Love Kings master classes. Love Kings master classes. But there was never emphasis on Love Kings. Okay. I didn't know for me what Love Kings meant yet. Yeah. My sister and I created it. So okay. my favorite verse in the Bible is 1 Corinthians chapter 13, um, verse 4 to 7. Um, so love is patient. Yes. Love is kind. Yes. It does not boast. It does, I'm not going to say it like um, perfectly. But so my sister's like, and I, we used to have Bible readings with my mom yeah. every, ni- every yeah. night. My sister was like, you used to read the same scripture every, <laughs> every night. Every single night, yeah. And then she was like, it has, and she says like, you embody love. You want wow. love. You don't always get it right, sure. but you are intentional about it. So my sister sure. says, like even at my event, she spoke about that. And then she says, it has to have love. Mm. And then I was like, oh loving ourselves through our hair mm. and i was like oh love kinks so sure. kink is i always say it's a triple entendre <laughs> like jay-z always says but it's basically got so many meanings yeah. so the kinks of life yeah so life has crossed kink- like yeah yes yes the roads aren't you know yeah the road isn't straight yeah forward and then um it's a kink of your hair yes. um i forgot the third one was but yeah love the love kinkiness kinks. of everything, of everything. yes <gasps> Oh so my. I was like, I didn't know that. I've actually never thought of the name. Oh wow! wow. I get that though. I get wow. that though. So, yeah, love kinks means so much to me, and it sure. means so much to my life experience, and it means so much for me accessing other black women's life experiences. Yeah. So it'll never end. Yeah, it's amazing how um, I guess the foundation of both what we do is is black women, predominantly yeah. black yeah. women, women, but the the expression is so different. So different. So different. So different, but it's so rewarding. And like, it and it and it, everything has its place everything has it, all of our emotions and feelings and way that we choose to express ourselves this is, is valid i'm just getting too emotional why am i so emotional today oh my gosh but sure. but 
being a black woman is what you know most. Yeah. So why not create from that perspective? Yeah. Because yeah. that's the perspective you know most. Yeah. The second, the second thing I know most after being a black woman is being a town planner, and I did that for ten years, and yeah. I loved it. Yeah. I'm a passionate yeah. person. So I'm gonna love a lot of things. Everything you yeah. do, yeah. But here is, I think. God's gift for me. Sure. I prayed for passion. I prayed for passion. I prayed for passion so much. Yeah. I thought passion would be my kids. I thought passion would be a relationship. Yeah. I thought passion would be so many things. And then God gave me hair. So sure. I was like, so purpose and passion in my life is here. There's not a single day I've ever woken up and not felt like deep. Like even if I, I'm in bed all day, yeah. I think I'm every day I'm doing something. Yeah. It, it, connected to that yes thank you so much for watching today's episode i hope it was impactful and that you enjoyed it to check out the full episode all you have to do is become a wisdom and wellness member by clicking the join button if not you're more than welcome to catch the full audio version on any of your podcast platforms thank you for watching and thank you for being a wisdom and wellness member